Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan Nice, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video. And I make new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So this video is basically going to be kind of, I don't even know what to call it, a life update, uh, what's been going on kind of video. Um, just because I do want to explain what's been going on. Um, and then I also want to share with you guys how I've been dealing with things. Um, because the past month or so I've been finding that I, I have been slipping back into sort of a mini depression and though I am delivered from depression obviously uh, I do find that I still have my days where I slip back in because the spirit of depression is kind of like a familiar familiar thing to me and this past Sunday my bishop's um, mother she spoke and mentioned how a lot of us have like familiar spirits and those spirits are kind of like things that we're so used to being enveloped in that they become so normal for us so like we can have a good day and then think something crazy but it's not that it's a crazy thought it's just because we were so used to living in that life with those spirits that it's now become a part of us kind of thing and it really had me thinking about how I've been feeling the last month and a half or so um because I'm really battling with a lot of things uh first um you guys know I don't know if I mentioned it before I think I did but I mentioned how I had a job opportunity thrown at my lap I'm gonna pray about it and you know God revealed to me that he allowed me to have the position thrown on my lap because at first I thought it was a trick of the enemy honestly but I had to pray about it and really pray um, so everything went smooth. I passed the uh, the phone interview. I went in for the actual audition interview, and the audition went well. Like the comments that I was getting back and everything was great. But um, maybe two or three days afterwards, they called me and told me that they, you know, picked someone else, and it kind of broke my spirits only because I've been okay. So the last time that I worked was in 2012. Um, September 2012, I ended up working for Macy's um, in the beauty at the beauty counters on call. So I was working for all the counters. I worked for Clinique, Estee Lauder, Lancome, Chanel. Um, I had a few trials with Elizabeth Arden and um, Clarence, but I was mostly working between Chanel and uh, Lancome and sometimes Estee Lauder. Those were like the three counters, and I was really working with Lancome. But I had to stop because my family ended up be had we had some dealings we basically were displaced i think that's the word right um say and i basically had to leave my job to help my mom out with my siblings um and this is when we were living in jersey and then we ended up moving back to new york in 2013 so i had to quit my job in january so i only worked september october november these four months i worked and when i worked you guys my paycheck for a week was about the same my mother was making um and that's only because I was on call, so I didn't have a set schedule or set hours. I could work as many hours as I wanted to as long as this, there was a slot open. And there was always slots open at Lancome because a lot of the workers were taking breaks and stuff like that. And they were older women. So I was I was rolling in bank, you guys. Like, And then on top of that, I was making commission off of whatever I sold. So I was making a good amount of money. Um, but I had to quit that job and then... In the summer of 2013, I ended up working for a celebrity makeup artist as her assistant. And that went well throughout the summer, but then I got pregnant. And um, got pregnant and had my son in 2014. And then I wanted to take a year off just to spend that year with him. So I wanted to start working again in like 2015 when he turned one. That didn't work out. So I've been applying to jobs nonstop. And a lot of people think I just sit on my butt at home and don't apply. I literally apply to jobs non-stop i can say i probably applied to maybe 20 30 jobs a day i've applied even to like walmart i've applied to mcdonald's i've applied to kfc like i've applied to so many fast food restaurants you guys and it's not something that i want but it's like it's to the point like i really want to work but god has just not been opening the door for me to work it wasn't until the end of 2017 that i actually ended up doing some a makeup gig for a hairstylist who owns her own salon that she opened up her salon and allowed me to work in her salon and I've worked in her salon maybe four times and of those four times um, one client canceled the second client just I guess she was shocked because the salon is a black owned salon and I do look young 
Um, so she kind of like walked out and didn't even get her makeup done. So it was two times that I went for no reason. And then the second two times, I actually did a great job. I had a prom client and then I had an older woman to do um, makeup on and they loved it. And I probably entered their pictures here if I feel like it. But, um, you know, that went well. But right now the hair salon owner slash stylist is, um, getting married this year. So she's been busy with that. But, um, it's just been really quiet as far as, you know, working, doing makeup. I've done gigs here and there with my fiance, um, with his clients, and like we have a show that we're doing in September. Um, but it's been very quiet, and it's just like I need finances, and I know that I'm like prioritizing wrong because I'm kind of like making getting a job kind of like an idol in a sense because that's all that I see. I'm like tunnel vision, need a job, need to apply to a job, need to get a job. But um, all in all, throughout the years that I, it's been maybe six years now, 2012. 2013 um it's 2018 five years i'll say five years i haven't worked yet five years i just haven't worked and um i'm i mean like our actual nine to five job not including like the little makeup gigs that i do here and there because i am a freelance makeup artist i do work at a hair salon but i don't pick up as many clients and i feel like the re the thing with that is i need to get my license i don't have my license i don't have my permit i'm 27 years old i know but um i'm a new yorker in new york we didn't need that we had public transportation living in jersey is a different story um, so I definitely, I feel like once I get my permit and my license, things will start to look up because I'll be able to use the car more and be able to get to where I need to go to. But right now it's just, I don't know, it's very daunting. It's very annoying. And a lot of my friends, you know, have been getting jobs. They have been, and I'm, and I'm not to say I'm upset. I'm very happy for a lot of the people. A lot of my friends have been getting married. I'm happy for them. But when you look at all the good that's going around and you're very happy for other people, it's one thing. But then you start to figure, like, wonder, like, when is it going to be your turn? When is it going to, things going to look up for you? And um, I hear a lot of people tell me that they wish they had my life, that they wish that they could live like I live. Because, yes, I'm 27 years old. I still live at home with my mom. And I'm not ashamed of it, but I'm upset with myself because my plan for my life was totally different. But God has me going a completely different route. And I will say I am grateful for that because... If things would have went the way I wanted them to, I would have either been more broken, I would have still been in my depression, and I probably would have killed myself. And I'm being honest, because I used to try to kill myself. I used to try to commit suicide, but it never worked. And I'm going to do um, a video series on my, uh, kind of like my testimonies, because I have a lot of testimonies as far as molestation, rape, um, dealing with suicide, depression, like, I, I have a lot of different testimonies dealing with parents, um, like, dealing with your family once they're divorced and family issues and stuff like that. I have a lot of testimonies that I need to share. I know God wants me to share. I'm just going to work on that when school starts with my kid, um, my son. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot in, you know, I'm in my, my sisters and fr my, they're my friends, but I consider them my sister and brother a lot more than just friends. So I'm in their wedding as a bridesmaid and I love my sister, Dev. She's like, we're like this i love her to death and she's she's getting married um next year and i'm watching everyone else get married and it's just like okay when is it my go and again i know every relationship is different and where my fiance and i are right now in our relationship um is not the best place but it's better than what it was back then when we should have been married um we we should have been married uh 2015 2017 yeah it's 2018 um so yeah and part of me gets annoyed but i'm also the other part of me is like okay i understand because i'm starting to see the different things that are changing in our relationship for the better i'm starting to see things that are working out for the better but um you know it gets frustrating so frustrating when i'm trying like i'm praying about it and i'm trusting god on it but then i guess i try to take it upon myself to do things and i frustrate myself which makes it worse but um yeah and um so i've been dealing with that um just trying to find work and things like that and then again with the marriage situation i'm like over it but then i'm like i'm grateful that things aren't being rushed and then we have family issues um i do have a younger brother from my father um which i'll get into that'll be in one of my testimony stories but i haven't seen my little brother my baby brother in a year you guys and it's starting to really be painful for me like my heart is really starting to feel the pressure of it because my son loves all of my son loves all of his relatives he loves all of them and he really loves my little brother a lot 
um, and I'll post a picture here of him and my little brother when we went down south a year ago to my grandmother's. They were sleeping together, like, they love each other so much, and my son always asks me, you know, I want to see Papa, I want to see Uncle Riley, and it's just like, I can't really say anything about it because I haven't seen him in a year, no one has spoken to him in a year, and I know all that I can do is pray for him, and I do pray for my brother a lot more, um, just because things are just not what they should be i'm gonna just put it like that um and i'm concerned about him and i do love my little brother a lot like i've loved him from the first time we met um and you know my dad made a stupid decision can't be mad with my father like i can't be mad at my little brother over my father's stupid decision but um my siblings and i we love our brother whether he's half brother or not like he's our brother that's it and the fact that we haven't seen him in a year, my son has been consistently asking to see him. It's starting to really hurt. <laughs> like, when my son asks me, I start to feel like I'm going to cry because it's like I can't do anything about it. Like, we can't see him for whatever the reason is. Um, even my father hasn't seen him in a year. So it's kind of, like, annoying. So that's been getting to me. Um, and then just me being in my head, just just me being in my head i have decided to be celibate um i do struggle with sexual sin it is what it is um that's how my son got here obviously <laughs> um but i am a very sexual person i enjoy sex it is what it is i'm i'm being as open and transparent as possible i'm a very sexual person i like sex and my fiance and i were always very sexual it is what it is that's just how our relationship was um it wasn't until I got pregnant that I kind of like stopped all types of sex with him just because um, I just was we were dealing with things in our relationship and then I just got irritated with it um, but then I would find myself like I would go good we would be good for like months and then I'll slip and they will be good and then I'll slip but lately I've we've been strong it's let me see if I can find how many months it's been probably not that long like for me it feels like forever it probably hasn't been that long though because I actually do keep track <laughs> on my app uh which some people might think is crazy wow okay it's been two and a half months two and a half months you guys i didn't even know that two and a half months um and to some of you it may be like what but for me that's a big thing because i haven't slipped and i've been so close to slipping you guys like so close but i've been doing like studies on like sexual sin and um things like that and when I say sexual sin, I mean sex. I don't masturbate. Um, I've never masturbated. I hate masturbation. It just sounds stupid to me and it it doesn't do anything. I'm being honest. So when I say sexual sin, I mean actual sex. You know, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. Because for sexual, sexual sin for some people is pornography. Some, some people it's masturbation. Um, it can be oral. It can be vaginal, whatever. For me, it's actual sex. Like, I don't masturbate that's just nasty to me but whatever we're sidetracking um i don't really watch porn but i find that i struggle a lot um sticking with it because i'm so used to me and him doing what we do and um it's a struggle it's it's a real struggle and these past two weeks <laughs> have been hard like Hard. It's to the point where I have to put boundaries to myself where I can't go to his house because I know how I am and because I'm such a sexual person I can't be around him in closed confined places for too long and that sounds terrible. I know but That's just how our relationship was um, we were so used to doing it all the time And it's not that I don't want to because Lord knows I do but I'm trying to get our relationship to a point where we are strong because I don't want to go into our marriage with the problems that we have now or that we did have and um a lot of the things are not like where they should be but it's definitely better than where they used to be um my fiance and i have been together almost six years come september 12th it'll be six years we've been engaged for five so um you know six years may not sound like a lot to some people but with everything that we've gone through we've almost broken up maybe three or four times like it was that bad um that bad you guys like on his end i don't know but for me i've just like been at that point three or four times um and we love each other and it's not like we just have love for each other i have love for him i am in love with that man that man is like everything to me and more he is exactly what 
I prayed for, basically. Everything that I asked God for, I got in him, minus the extra stuff that I don't care for. But, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's just, a, it's been a struggle, like a real struggle to be around him, especially in his room at his house. It's hard. It's, it's hard, you guys. So I've been dealing with that. So, you know, and then I always feel like I'm not enough. I know that sounds crazy, but I always feel like I'm not enough for him. Um, I feel like he could find someone better. And again, I know that's the enemy just talking in my mind, um, whispering in my ear. Because I know what God has been telling me concerning my relationship with him. I know that he is the one for me um, because God has mentioned it to me plenty of times. Like, I know for a fact. Like, you know, there's like that puppy love or that fling that you're with just because you've been together for so long. But no, it's been t ministered to me. I've seen dreams. I've spoken to God about it plenty of times. Like, I know he's the one for me. It's just, it's hard, you guys. Oh my God, it's so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> and it's like, I could, we could move in together, but I don't work. And then I don't want to live with him not being married. And I know that sounds crazy, especially since we had a son out of wedlock. But I know that if I continue in sexual sin with him, I'm going to end up pregnant again. I know that for a fact. I've had other scares. I've had situations where I did end up pregnant, but ended up having miscarriages. Like, it was crazy. There's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm just trying to get myself where God needs me to be. But all in all, with all of that, like I said, with all the depression and the sexual sin and all that, I really see why God has me going the way that he has me going because he has me going in a completely different route. Um, I mean, look, I created Dota Up and Increase last year. It's been a year, you guys. July 29th? I can't remember... It was July 20-something when I made Daughter Up Increase in September when I started the blog and the uh, YouTube channel. So it's been almost a year since I've had this YouTube channel, a year since I've had Daughter Up Increase. And since I've had it, I've been able to help so many people. I've been able to really dive deeper into the word for myself and really see what God has for me. And, oh, that's another thing. I haven't been studying and God knows how long guys you guys i have not studied psalms in forever i'm still on mark on chapter three it's been it's been a lot and it's i think it's all, all everything has been getting to me because i haven't been studying and i know i notice a difference when i study the word of god i'm not as easy it's not easy for me to slip into depression but when i take days off weeks off when i say it's been months you guys it's been months since I've picked up my Bible and studied. And I'm not talking about like when I do John for like Daughter of Increase on, on here or on YouTube and Facebook. I mean like my personal studies. I haven't done them in forever. What I have been doing though is I don't even read my devotionals no more, you guys. My devotionals that I normally have, um, the devotionals that I said I was going to read throughout the year, I haven't read those. I don't even read the Our Daily Bread or the In Touch Ministries. What I have been doing though is using the Holy Bible app on my phone. Uh, let me open this quickly. So I've been using the Holy Bible app on my phone a lot more, if it opens. This, the version Holy Bible app, a lot more. You guys can see my perfect streaks. <laughs> That's so retarded, but yeah. I have 186 streaks and 25 perfect weeks. So I've been doing a lot of my devotionals from there, and I've been using my faith planners, which I'm going to do a separate video on. But um, here is my Recollections faith planner. And I've been using this a lot more. I actually need to do my devotional from today and yesterday. I actually did my from yesterday. I just didn't write the information down. But I basically pick like a two-week or one-week devotional. And I will, you know, read through it. And then I use a journal to write down like the main points. And then transfer some points into here. So I've been using this. I've been using my... My knockoff happy planner, if you will. This is the All Glam Planner from Walmart, though it does look like a happy planner. I've been using this to do some scripture writing, which I've been quite enjoying. I've been enjoying scripture writing, you guys. I don't have any from July right now. Let me just take this out. So, I've been scripture writing. And scripture writing was never something that I enjoyed doing, but I've been doing that quite often. Let me see if I can show you. I've been scripture writing, and I've also finally started doing some verse mapping. I stopped just because I don't like the way it is in this uh, notebook, but this is a sketch pad that I got from Dollar Tree, and I use it to verse map. 
and here's how that looks. So I've just been burst mapping in here. But what I don't like is that the pages like are like really loose at the top, so I had to like tape them down, which sucks. Like as you guys can see, this page is like gonna come off, but you know, I've been burst mapping a lot. So I've been doing that to keep myself in the word of God, to make sure that the word of God is still in me. Um, and with my scripture writing, normally some people just write out the scripture and that's it, or like a prayer. I actually write out the scripture and try to explain what it means to me and probably add a prayer to it. Um, but that's pretty much how I've been sticking to the word of God. I haven't been doing my studies, like I said, and it's, it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, but I'm getting through it. I'm getting back to the old me, um, the me previous without all the craziness in my brain. Um, and I guess I think things will be better once my son is in school because then I'll know I'll have to be on a time frame with things like I have to literally schedule things and do them so I'll be able to do that more um and I think that's pretty much it as far as this video just a quick update uh wi-fi is still down won't be back up till September so I do have to go to the library and I've been slacking on that because it's been super hot so when my son goes back to school I'll be able to go to the library twice a week which is great um as far as the John Bible study with that I like I said I've been slacking I only have chapters one two and three up I'm working on chap having chapters 4, 5, and 6 done and um, uploaded for you guys. And then I'm also going to be trying to finish up John before December 25th. Because I want to be done with John by the end of December so that in 2019 I can really work on new things. Um, I'm probably going to take a break in January and jump back into like book clubs and readings in February. Um, so I'm just kind of try to get that scheduled done. And I think I'm going to do like maybe three books and three Bible studies a year. I know the next Bible study that I do is going to be on like the prophets, um, the minor prophets, the little short books, because doing these gospels are super long, um, like super long. So definitely I have in mind what I want to do next, but we'll see. But I think that's pretty much it for this video. This is a long video. I just wanted to talk to you guys a bit, tell you guys what's been going on, how my brain has been thinking and working and things like that. Um, but I'm well, I'm getting back to the old me, getting back to how things used to be in my head, <laughs> and, um, I'll get there. Um, that testimony series will start in September. I don't know when, but I'm going to start in September when I know for a fact that I have time to make those videos. And, um, my video uploading schedule might change to once a week. I don't really want to just drop to once a week because I kind of like the Tuesday, Thursday scheduling. But we'll see how September goes. If it doesn't go well, I'm going to just go to uploading only on Thursdays. And that's like specific YouTube content. I'm not talking about like Bible studies and stuff. Those will go up when they can. But like specific videos. Um, I do have videos coming on like prayer journaling and praying. Um, my devotional time and stuff like that. I do have more study with me, devotionals with me. Videos coming soon because a lot of you guys are requesting those. And I know I'm going to be doing those because... Everyone will be gone back to work, going back to school, and I'll have time because, again, I'm a stay-at-home mom if you guys don't know. But that's pretty much it for this video. The next video will most likely be an in-depth look at um, my planners that I use for de my devotionals as well as scripture writing. But um, that's pretty much it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!